guys, Cerulea here, and I'm diving back into The Principles of Knitting by June Hemmons Hyatt. We're going to talk about non-wool animal fibers. In episode 3 I talked about wool at length, and I'm going to try to make videos shorter, so I'm only going to cover some of the highlights. But this, this section that uh, June covers materials in, it's section 7 of the book, and chapter 27 specifically talks about fibers. It starts on page 543, and it covers a lot, so I'll just cover some of the facts that I found really interesting. Mohair comes from Angora goats that are from Ankara, Turkey. That's also the birthplace of the Angora rabbit. So those two amazing fiber-producing animals hail from the same region. Um, it's pretty interesting that mohair is, actually comes from Angora goats, and then, yeah, you kind of get confused because Angora is another fiber as well. But don't get them confused. They both make amazing fibers with very different properties, and that's actually something that I found really cool about this section. June addresses you in a way that kind of, it can cater you even if you're not a knitter. So she tells you how the fiber is processed, how it's produced, and how it's spun for, you know, to highlight the qualities and, and diminish the, the negative aspects of each fiber, because um, there's pros and cons to each fiber. So she talks about that, and then she also talks about uh, what you should use it for. You know, there's some fibers that are not appropriate for certain projects, like a high wear item, like a sock. Um, but just getting back to mohair, mohair is actually called, she doesn't call it this, but I've heard it called nature's nylon because it's really, really strong. Something that June also drives home is that softness is always a sacrifice. You have to understand that the softer your fiber is, the more delicate it is, and the more it's going to need special attention. Either, you know, it's going to need to be either blended with things that are stronger and that can reduce the tendency to pill or break. Um, or, you know, just you can use it, but don't use it for things that are going to maybe get a lot of hard use. So um, always remember that when you're choosing fibers that are like super soft and maybe softly spun merinos and stuff like that. Um, you know, consider, consider how they're going to wear in the long haul. A fact that I thought was really cool was that Vicuña and Guanaco from Peru are wild and they were actually almost uh, extinct because they were hunted so much so in the 1960s the Peruvian government decided to protect them and um, now they are shorn twice a year and their fibers are incredibly rare and precious and that's why they're so expensive. They're also actually sometimes more soft than cashmere. The micron count is finer. So just something to know about micron count too. The higher the number, the coarser it is, and the lower the number, the finer it is. So cashmere, merino, those are all around like 13 to 19, 20 maybe. Um, and the coarser the fiber, the higher the number will be. June writes at length about silk, or what's called sericulture, and how it started in China and then moved to Japan and India and then the rest of the world. Um, I didn't know that it was actually a moth that creates silk and not a worm, even though it's called a silkworm, but I did learn the definitions of terms like raw silk, mulberry, uh, and tessa silk, and what what those def what those words actually mean. And silk is known for being smooth, lustrous, and translucent, which makes it a wonderful fiber to dye because it has a jewel-like gleam, especially when it's blended with other fibers. It kind of brings that to the table. Um, it's incredibly strong, and it's also very fine. The micron count on that is about 10, which is very, very low, and it also is very strong. The only thing stronger than it is spiderweb, which I thought was really cool. I learned a few new words in this section. One of those was medulla, which is actually one of my favorite Bjork albums. It means a hollow core, and it it's a hollow core that's found in hair-like fibers like alpaca, um, and actually possum down, which is what Zolana uses for its yarns. Um, this hollow core is just like a down blanket. It's something that traps air and keeps you warm, and it also keeps the fiber really lightweight. So that was really cool. I learned a lot of new words in this section, and my favorite was medulla, which is actually one of my favorite Bjork albums. It means hollow core, and it's something that certain fibers have. Alpaca is one fiber that has a medulla, and so does possum fiber, which is what we use in Zolana yarns. Um, the hollow core basically traps air and creates a really warm fiber, and also something that's really lightweight. Um, so that's really cool. June discusses the fact that you can't really dye possum. It's always going to retain sort of the the taupey brown that it has. Um, it can't. It can be bleached uh, to a point, and then it can be blended with other things. But it is always going to have a distinctive sort of um, smoky brown halo, which I love personally. Um, June says in the book that possum fur is only blended with 
merino wool, but that's actually not true. Um, we do have merino blends. We have Heron and Rimu and a few others, um, but we also have blended it with silk and cashmere and cotton in one case. So those are some yarns. I'll write more about them on the blog. But anytime you have a blend, you're actually creating what I like to call a kitchen sink fiber, where you have you know lots of different fibers put together, and you're sort of bringing out the best of each of them, and also diminishing or evening out some of the the flaws that are present in some of the fibers. So it's it's a really fun thing to kind of come up with yarn blends and, and also play with different ones and see what'll work for your project and just your personal knitting style and also what you like to wear, what's going to be comfortable seasonally. Um, it changes, you know, for everyone. So it's worth getting to know all these different things and June does a wonderful job covering them.